Hey folks, a while back I made this handy little repro cart for a Castlevania Bloodline for the Sega Genesis Mega Drive. Because let's face it, there's no way I can afford these uh, high-end games, the way out of my uh, price league. So uh, I thought I would make repros. And there's uh, a few games I'd love to play as well. Uh, stuff like Musha and uh, uh, I never got to play uh, Contra Hard Corps. And there's a few other games like that. So I thought actually we could actually make more and I'll show you exactly how I go about and not skip um, some of the uh, most tedious steps. So I'll probably uh, show you all the desoldering and resoldering part and all that kind of stuff. So let's get started. Let's find a few cards that I have that I can use uh, to make um, better uh, repro games. There you go. I have a few sacrificial uh, cards here. Um, stuff that I really, really, really wouldn't play. You can't really even give those away as uh, John Riggs would say. So. Let's use these uh, to make, uh, I, I don't know, we're gonna go for Musha, probably uh, Contra Hard Cops, and what's the last one? What would be a cool one to get? Maybe uh, Midnight Resistance. So there you go, let's uh, let's uh, try those three games, and I'll show you well, everything from opening the cart to soldering, desoldering, and uh, and burning the ROM. And uh, maybe print a label, because that's what I did for, for here. It's actually just printed on simple, Simple play paper and uh, and glued on, but it, it does the trick. I have repro here, um, and uh, well, yeah. Let's show you all this. First, I'm gonna have to clean my uh, workbench here because it's a mess. So we'll start with opening this guy. So you need uh, one of those uh, uh, funny-looking screwdrivers. You'll find these on eBay. Uh, if you look for probably Sega card opener or something like that, or screwdriver. Um, Nintendo have their own format. Sega, there's different formats. You find these sort of uh, hex screwdrivers, uh, the star-shaped ones as well, and you find standard uh, screws as well. They're the funny ones. Let me see if I can zoom in on this. There you go. Uh, and you need this. Anyway, let's open our cart. So, uh, the front, usually you have the front of the cart and the ROM here is right on the front. Uh, the good thing about these is they're only soldered on one side, or actually there's no trace um, or no solder pads on the on this side. So there's only solder pads on this side, so it makes it a lot easier to, um, to remove the solder. So we'll do this and probably speed up footage at this point. Uh, there you go, so that's most of the uh, solder removed. Uh, hopefully it should pop right up. Doesn't look like it wants to move this one. Wow, stubborn. There's one thing I can do is I can actually use a flathead screwdriver to uh, gently, and you rock it side to side. Not like this, but like this. Um, to avoid damaging too much of the traces. Get this guy out. Yeah, this is where the problem is. Ah, uh, uh, There you go. Wow, now this was super stubborn. And, uh, but it doesn't look like we have any uh, lifted traces. So that's a good sign. Now that's the first time, I actually I see signs of corrosion on the chip here, on the legs. So maybe that was it. Um, I, I almost feel like I want to do another one right in front of you, so you, you see it's normally much easier. So there you go. Um, I'm going to do another one.
there you go this one actually you lift it by hand straight away so okay so now it's time to burn our uh, EEPROMs um, I'm gonna try and stay out of the uh, the shadow but there you go this is the type of EEPROM you need or the one I'm gonna use anyway um, come on focus there you go I'm using um, M27 C160 these are two kilobytes um, EEPROMs sorry not two kilobytes two megs EEPROMs so essentially what I've uh, the, the boards I had let me grab them yes yeah, we'll do so the, uh, the the boards I actually salvage are actually two meg uh, boards and the um, Mega Drive comes in different varieties. So you have 500Ks, you have one meg, two meg, and four megs. So for the 500Ks, you actually want a, an M, sorry, M27C400. For the one meg, you want M27C800. For the two megs, you want these ones, which are the 160. Um, and then the M27C322 for the four megabyte. Uh, cat. So the best way to do this is if you have um, essentially the two two meg ROM is going to fit the two meg cart type. So you want to match the ROM with the cart type. The good thing is uh, a lower so a lower size so one megabyte or five hundred uh, meg um, Ks will actually fit on a two meg. So you can actually fit smaller size games uh, on a on a bigger size cart type. Um, there's, there's not a lot of 4 megs boards, so having a good stock of uh, 2, two meg um, um, EEPROMs is actually a good idea. And if you look here at the size of these, uh, the ROMs here, Contra Hard Cops is 2 megs, uh, Midnight Resistance is 1 meg, and uh, Musha is 500 uh, Ks. So all of these will fit on, uh, not at the same time, what I mean is, is the two, 1 meg will fit in the 2 meg ROM, uh, the 500k will fit in there and then this will be perfect for the 2 meg ROM because this is 2 megs. You can't essentially put a 4 meg or 2 meg ROM in a 500k or 1 meg cart. Uh, so that's why I've been using all 2 meg carts because that's the only uh, EEPROMs I have, those 2 megs. Anyway, I'm not sure if I'm making myself clear, but if you have any questions just put them in the comment, I'm sure um, somebody will answer them. Um, so this is my burner here, the GQ4X4, uh, and I have the adapter here for a, a 42 pin uh, connector. Well, actually, this is, will not fit. It actually will do 40 pin, but not 42 pin. So you need uh, this uh, adapter for the 16 bit. If you don't know, and actually, the uh, you can see the legs here are shorter. So if you don't know exactly where to put what, it's actually all written here. You have. Uh, if this language is actually handy, tells you that this socket here will fit all these chips and R160 is there. So this actually goes there. But if you're not sure where to put it, do you put it in the bottom or uh, at the top? It actually tells you here, uh, keep upper ZIF, this is a ZIF connector, upper pin slot empty for 42 pin dip e the EEPROMs. This is the case here, this is a 42 pin. Uh, EEPROM so we actually put it right at the bottom pin here there you go secure this and then where does this go does it go here or does this go here well our software will tell us um, let me just put that to full size there you go and on focus so uh, we go to file we are gonna sorry no we go to device we're gonna select our device here so we're looking here for um, I have my favorite saved, but if not, we can actually type 22C, uh, 160, there you go. Um, and I have it saved here, M22C, 560, 160. So I've loaded my device type, so that actually tells the program this is the type of uh, chips we're gonna burn, and it tells you here the adapter goes at the bottom, so we're gonna do exactly that. We're gonna put our adapter at the bottom. Do, 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 do. And there we go. And now we're gonna load our ROM into the software. So uh, looking for Mega Drive ROMs. This is my folder where I've saved all my uh, files. Come on. And there you go. I, I've 
on my arm. So we're gonna take the uh, the first one, contra hard cups there. And then what we want to do is do a bite swap. Um, because we have to. Uh, essentially when you burn uh, a Mega Drive ROM, you load the ROM and you have to bite swap it before you actually uh, you actually uh, do that. Where is the bite swap here? Huh. Uh, forgot where it was. Actually, I can actually do this here. Uh, AV bite swap. There you go. But I'm trying to find out where in the menu it is. Uh, probably seen it. Actually, you probably have. Read, write, blank, check, get ID, buffer, uh, buffer bite swap. There you go. So yeah, we've loaded the uh, the ROM and it's actually in our buffer here. So you can actually see the content of the ROM in uh, in Exodismal and in uh, ASCII. Um, you can see here there's a nice text telling us it is Contra Hard Carps Genesis. So we're gonna buy swap the thing. So I'm gonna click on here or you go to uh, you go to command buffer byte swap. And this is what byte swapping does. It just swipes uh, uh, swaps the uh, the bytes here. So anyway so it's ready to burn. So we're just gonna click on burn right it's gonna take a while. Uh, at this stage, I will probably pause because this is uh, gonna take quite a while, and I'm holding this with my hands, and I don't want my hands, and my arms to get tired. But you can see it's it's gonna be quite slow in this case. So uh, let's come back in a minute. While we are waiting for our EEPROM to uh, write properly, you can pour yourself a whiskey and tonic, but more importantly, you can actually just uh, print yourself labels for your EEPROMs. This will actually help uh, first uh, cover this section here, which is not too important because the uh, the um, EEPROM will actually be encased in the, uh, in the box, so it won't see much UV light, but this is a uh, how you can actually erase uh, an EEPROM altogether by exposing it to UV light, uh, intense UV light. So um, to, d to delete the content of an EEPROM, you can put it in the box under UV light for uh, about, let's say, 15 minutes, and it, it'll, uh, it'll delete the content of the, uh, of the EEPROM. The other thing is uh, in, uh, in arcade PCB, uh, you wanna cover that because a lot of them would be actually exposed to an um, intermittent uh, UV light. So uh, you put a, a little piece of uh, of uh, of a tape with the name of the EEPROM, something like that. So we're going to do something something similar here um, with our with our EEPROMs. Okay, so uh, we've got our Contra uh, EEPROM burn. We're going to put this back on our PCB. So um, thing you need to do first is bend the legs ever so slightly. I like to put them on a flat surface, uh, hold them by the side like that, and just bend them forward a bit um, so that they actually line up with the, with the, uh, the holes here. Um, let me check this. It should be okay. It takes a bit of fiddling. Uh, usually when you get a brand new EEPROM, the leg are uh, a bit wide, uh, set wide, so you might uh, want to do this to uh, bring them back together. And the point of this video is actually to show you exactly the, the, the process. Um, in the previous one, people kind of liked it, but they wanted to see uh, actually how you do it. And I, I, I sort of showed the uh, theory of doing it. I think we're good here. Yeah, this is actually uh, all aligned. So from here, we take our soldering iron, our solder and uh, get soldering. I should get myself a fan to blow all that. This should, this should be lead free uh, solder, but it's still not ideal to be um, inhaling fumes like that. Also, ideally, you don't want to do your solder like that. You want to be able to maybe wedge the board on its side, because if you do it like that, the solder actually f uh, falls on the other side, or it can actually just collect on the legs. Uh, here it's fine because we can actually see but sometimes if the holes are a bit bigger the sorry if the holes are a bit bigger the solder if you if you solder like this the solder will fall and it can actually short the legs um, it's not a problem here because we can see 
the individual legs, but on a bigger PCB like an arcade board or even a console, it can be a problem. So keep that in mind when you're doing your solder. Maybe find something to wedge the board against and then solder on the side. Now what I like to do is uh, go over it, warm the base, and then lift the solder up like that. It's just as nice, um, it's almost like a, a reflow, and it just gets nice contacts. Prevents uh, cold joints from occurring. And it looks a lot cleaner. Here we have a bridge here, and there you go. There you go. We should be uh, all good and done here. Yeah, that looks alright. Okay. One thing I like to do is actually inspect this with a, a magnifying glass and just check that every uh, point is okay. So I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna move on to uh, the other boards and do the same again. Um, so I don't think I need to show you the other boards. So I'm gonna skip that, and uh, I'll get back to you when they're all done. So one thing I like to do is to make these uh, repro labels as well, um, and I've made a, a selection of them. It's just different styles that try um, not to stick necessarily to the original, but uh, in most cases I do, in fairness. Um, this is the one I made for uh, Castlevania Bloodlines. Uh, I try to find some of the best resolution art. Um, it's kind of hard to find, and this one isn't great. You see it's very pixelated, but it'll do, uh, especially considering that I, I print it on very small format. But um, so I made uh, one for Midnight uh, Resistance, one for Contra Hard Corps, and uh, I made one for Mush uh, Musha. Where is Musha? It should be there. You go here, and uh, I have it worked in layers, and I have all the uh, Sega uh, stuff, uh, so you can actually see here it was in the original, but I, I wanted a better uh, version of it. And also, I actually just say it's a repro because you know. It, I don't want anybody to resell these if I ever lose them and they find them. Uh, mind you, it's not the uh, it'll be easy to decipher. It's not actually the original artwork, uh, and I keep in all these uh, repros the uh, the red uh, um, the red uh, whatever uh, semi circle thing um, uh, around the cart just because I like the layout. I've done this with my uh, my uh, Castlevania. Uh, bloodlines and you can see I print it on uh, on sort of cheap a4 paper um, The reason being again, um, I don't want it to be like too good quality to start with um, It's actually good enough for my purpose and also I don't want anybody to uh, to find these at some point and trying to resell them uh, I don't think it would happen, but uh, also the other reason is I don't have a laser printer uh, I probably would have printed them on laser Let's be honest, but um, I don't have one. All I have is a, a inkjet printer, so that's what I have to use. But it looks okay. So anyway, let's. Uh, I have one cut. Um, I'm gonna glue that down. Uh, and move back to the other side of the room here, and um, I glue this down. Pop the cart in, and uh, we're ready to play. You're probably wondering how do I glue this? Well, just standard paper glue, really. Uh, I don't want anything too strong either because it'd be a pain to uh, remove and trust me, the, the original ones were actually really hard to remove. Uh, I use a combination of hot water, alcohol and uh, WD-40 for some cases, but hot water and alcohol will go a long way. So um, here it's, I mean, it's just a simple glue. We're actually putting everything back together at this stage, you know? So try to get it uniform though. Uh, sort of everywhere and uh, yeah, I'm gonna use my fingers um, The trick here is to not have any large blobs of uh, glue anywhere Which is easier said than done And then some glue here and Over the edge and uh, don't hit me up um, if you want me to make a repro for you, because first I won't. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm making these for me. Um, 
only and there's a huge stigma to making repros on uh, in the um, at least console gaming community it's interesting because in in the arcade world it's much less frowned upon in the sense that you're repairing these uh, this this pcb so you're changing all the roms you're putting a ton of new roms and new rams and stuff like that so a lot of the chips that would be on the board after you repair it wouldn't be original uh, and somehow I think for arcade people, the PCB itself is what is the uh, the original uh, format, uh, and the rest is just uh, electronics, really. And uh, and they, these can be replaced. So the the content and the way this is addressed and the way this work is identical to the older chip. Um, I'm not sure where I put them at this stage, but it's it, it works exactly the same. It's the same thing. So I'm, I'm not sure why the stigma is there with repros, but it is. Um, anyway, and there you go. So we'll put everything back together. Um, yeah, so it's interesting, and I just I just wanted to do these for myself, really. Um, so unless you have a cart uh, like what John Riggs does, which I, I love. Um, I love his channel. Um, he, uh, if you have cards that aren't working, uh, they would be a good candidate for, you know, a repro or, or changing the ROM. Um, those, if you want to send these to me, I can try and fix them. Um, you know, you, you, I'll ask you for postage to send them back, but it'll be a cool, uh, a cool little video format. John Riggs does that uh, if, when people have uh, cards that don't work anymore. They, uh, they they send it to him, see if he can fix it, and if not, um, he, he changes it to something else, but um, and then sends it back or gives them away um, in his channel. So that could be a cool one to do as well. Um, so there you go. Actually, that, I, I'll say it now here now. If you have a if you have a card that isn't working, send it to me. I'll, I'll see if I can fix it, and uh, if you can cover postage back, I'll send it back to you working. Anyway, I'm gonna do this uh, for the other carts and uh, get back to you. And there you go, my uh, collection of repro carts went from one to four. Um, and these aren't bad games by any means, so um, I think now is time to play some uh, Genesis Mega Drive. Let's go. Hey, all working fine. That Sega logo. Let's see. And I have this console mo modded as well, so uh, if I want the uh, crop resolution or the full 60 hertz, you can actually see the difference in the frame rate. This is 50 hertz. It flickers. This is 60. Doesn't flicker as much. Nowhere near. And um, well, let's start the game. But I mean, there's no reason why it wouldn't start. Oh yeah, 90 stuff. Woo! Classic music, by the way. I, I love the sound this uh, game makes. And this is probably the most appropriate soundtrack to a Genesis game, um, and where it works the best. Generally, I wasn't a fan of the generic, uh, Genesis sound chip, but this... Oh, yeah. I would just leave it on just to listen to this tune. So awesome. Anyway, folks, this is how you make repro carts for uh, the Genesis. Um, I'll tell you what, I, if you have any recommendation of uh, what else I could be making, what great games uh, I should be making to play on the Genesis. I mean, I have a small collection here, but it's uh, it's by no means complete and, and uh, exhaustive. So um, let me know what, what games you think are worth making as a repro, and uh, we'll probably do another video. And if you have a cart that isn't working, um, well, send it to me and I'll see if I can fix it and we'll make a video out of that. And uh, I'll ask you probably to pay for postage to send it back to you or we'll, we'll, we'll give it as a donation at some point. Uh, anyway guys, uh, thank you for watching and uh, see you next time.